Hello and welcome to the program. The construction of one part of Russia's gas pipeline across the Black Sea to Turkey has been completed. Turkish Stream is part of Kremlin's efforts to bypass Ukraine as a gas transit route to Europe. So how will it affect the Ukrainian economy and how can Ukraine counteract this construction? Now to discuss this, welcome to the studio Henry Kobal, expert on natural gas sector. Hello and thank you for joining us. Thank you. So um, first, uh, First, let's talk about the most recent news about uh, Turk Stream. How will it affect the uh, Ukrainian, Ukrainian economy? Uh, Turk Stream is uh, under construction and uh, uh, hope next year uh, they say it will be built already. So uh, it will bring to, uh, to Turkish like uh, 25 billion cubic meters gas per mm -hmm. year. It's not too much, but uh, it's uh, big enough project. Um, now, uh, how, so Ukraine risks uh, losing uh, money with uh, Turk Stream, but the biggest threat right now is Nord Stream. Where is Nord Stream right now? What's the, what, what, what are the latest updates on this project? This year in May, mm. uh, the project starts and uh, now uh, already built like uh, 200 kilometers uh, under what uh, pipeline but uh, in generally it will uh, be like uh, 1200 kilometers so uh, it's uh, at the very beginning now do you think uh, it is realistic for ukraine to stop the project right now and how can ukraine help stop the project okay it's uh, difficult to to say yes or no because a lot of uh, a lot of companies a lot of states uh, governments engaging in this process, uh, uh, Russia and Gazprom promote this project, uh, pay a lot of money, talk uh, uh, a lot about this, but we, we see that uh, it's not uh, already decided because uh, United States as well as uh, some European country have strong uh, position to stop this project and uh, as well as Ukraine. Uh, so, um, we will see uh, this project uh, planned to be uh, finished in uh, two years and uh, a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Now, let's, um, let's focus a little bit about uh, especially what do uh, European, Ukrainian and European partners have to uh, win and or lose in this uh, Nord Stream project. Speaking about Germany, for example, thanks to uh, Nord Stream, Germany might become one of the major players in distribution of gas in Europe. What will stop Germany to continue to this path and how can and can it at one at one time, at a, an, in one hand, sorry, help uh, Ukraine, but in the other hand, uh, have its own interest? Uh, it's kind of a double, double speech here. Yes, yes, uh, but uh, it's a, a big play. Uh, Germany as a recipient of the gas from Russia uh, really uh, interesting in this uh, project and uh, they will be, uh, German companies will be uh, recipient, they will receive money from this project. So this is interesting for Germany, this is uh, interesting for a German company, it's obvious. But uh, German uh, have uh, partners in Europe uh, as well as United States, the biggest uh, German partners, trade partners, so uh, German uh, should uh, listen uh, their partners. So we hope that United States uh, find some best words to to explain mm -hmm. <laughs> that he should stop it. Now that's inter interesting that you raised um, the issue, or let's say um, the role of the United States, because recently uh, the United States signed an agreement with a Polish uh, state-owned company about the selling of uh, LNG, of liquid liquefied gas. And uh, it raises a question here, which is, uh, isn't there some sort of, I wouldn't say new Cold War, but the resources war, uh, Russian gas vs uh, LNG to share this European market? Uh, it's uh, a little bit different things mm -hmm. uh, because uh, LNG it's um, not the same as a pipeline uh, uh, gas uh, because uh, LNG you can sell anywhere throughout the world. You can because say, you can ship it, you can, yes, yeah, you can transport take it. Take it to Asia, you, mm. you can say to Europe, to Poland, anyway. So uh, 
gas pipeline is a little bit uh, another because you should uh, trade sell directly through this pipeline so um, lng trading is much more flexibility flexibility um <clears throat> now the pipeline and the construction construction of the pipeline uh, demands also agreements with certain countries recently this year there has been um, some declaration especially from sweden saying that uh, sweden one of the sweden top officials said it could not refuse the offer quote the offer from uh, russia to pass by its water and denmark itself admitted that russia kind of blackmailed it what are the russia's pressure in that case what is what what how how is russia playing that kind of pressure game uh, yeah, there are some uh, other um, so, uh, resolution for Russia for this project because they can change a little bit, you know, not uh, it will pass not uh, through the Denmark uh, border, but uh, a few kilometers. Uh, it mm -hmm. will uh, takes a little bit more money. Uh, it will takes a time, but uh, they can't stop it. Now, money is uh, the key here. Uh, I'm thinking about the sanctions. Do the sanctions over Russia, which have been implemented since 2014, can it help to um, slow down the project, or at least, you know, certain technology not to go uh, in Russia and to, yes, yeah, slow down a little bit the, the process of Nord Stream? Does it have a real leverage on this? Uh, sanction from the United States mm -hmm. government already slowed down the process because uh, at this time uh, this project uh, already should be done, but. We see it uh, postponed uh, for at least two years, so it's uh, we can say that already influence on this uh, United States on already influence on this process. So, but it's not enough to stop it, you mm -hmm. know. So, uh, but uh, we have uh, two years, and uh, and see can happen during this time. Recently. Uh, also, and thinking about uh, the partners or the side of Ukraine in this case, Polish prime ministers, uh, Polish prime minister said it was uh, basically funding, you know, in some sort of way, paying for Nord Stream uh, was kind of funding uh, the the Russian army in so, in some uh, vicious circles. So first, how to stop the circle, and what's your take on this stance? Uh, even if uh, it was a really provocative statement, though he used this, uh, some provocative, provocative words, but it's uh, a little bit. Uh, uh, it's a bit, bit of a shortcut, I yeah, <laughs> agree. Yeah, yeah, because uh, so uh, Ukrainian uh, gas transition system uh, is still in in mm -hmm. the play because uh, uh, Russia need in Europe need Ukrainian uh, gas transition system for uh, some uh, peak load uh, period, uh, especially in winter. And uh, even uh, if uh, all these uh, pipelines through uh, Nord Stream, Turkish Stream uh, will be working, uh, in winter uh, Europe need Ukrainian uh, uh, gas transition system. So I think uh, Ukraine uh, lose a lot of gas, but we will stay working and transit gas to Europe. So you're saying that Ukraine still has a role to play to play into that gas transition. Sure. So despite um, <clears throat> despite despite it, as you said, despite the fact that it's completely built, uh, there is still a way for Ukraine to to weigh in the gas market in in, in Europe. Yes, Ukraine will. Uh, we think that uh, now Ukraine transit. Uh, is like uh, 90 uh, billion cubic meters per year and after all this be uh, pipeline contraction it will uh, be uh, like uh, 30 uh, billion cubic meter per year it's uh, one third but uh, it's not uh, a small amount it's big amount mm -hmm. but uh, ukraine should uh, also think about the next uh, step about uh, plan b because we need to, uh, we need gas, we need uh, uh, transit system, and that's why we need uh, uh, to think uh, how Ukraine can increase his own gas production, and it will be the uh, 
resolve for our problem. Which brings me to my, uh, to my next question. One of the plan B might be renewable energy, uh, maybe a, a solar plant system around Chernobyl and all these things. Do you think it's realistic uh, that Ukraine might uh, follow a whole full transition from gas and you know, not to be completely dependent on that kind of geopolitical leverage? Sure, uh, at least Ukraine should do something in this uh, direction because uh, we have gas, we have a lot of other uh, sources for energy and uh, renewable as mm -hmm. well. So uh, I think uh, we can uh, find the answer for uh, this big question. Well, thank you very much for coming to our studio today. It was much. a pleasure. Uh, that was Hanadi Kobal, expert on natural gas sector. Thank you for watching the program and stay tuned for the rest.